Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Season 3, Episode 11, The Pig and the Rhino. Every time I review this show, it's always weird. It's like it's like reviewing the next um, movie in a set of movies because we always get such a sporadic schedule for this show that I never know when it's on. Like I'm, I'm fortunately two weeks behind, so I get to go straight into The Battle for New York, and I'm about to watch that like as soon as I finish this. But this was definitely a cool episode. I was excited to see that the show was back on because I'm always checking... You know, like every couple of weeks, and there, like it always seems to come on the week I stop checking, and then that's when the episodes start coming back. But this was definitely a great one. It was our first real look at Bebop and Rocksteady, which is really freaking awesome. I love seeing that. It was really fun to watch. Um, the designs are really cool. It's nice to see that Bebop actually keeps a lot of the cool tech aspects that he had when he was still just normal Anton Zek. I thought that was really cool. He has like the um the sort of Jordy LaForge thing from Star Trek going. He has, like, the visor. He has, um, like, the little laser skates that he has still. He still has the lasers that he shoots from his hip, the stun blasts and stuff, and the little glue thing. So that's really cool. I'd love to see if he still has, like, the um, the Mohawk laser beam thing going. That would actually be pretty sweet. Um, but I like the design. He still looks cool. He has the tag, which is fun. We get to see um, Rocksteady just be Rocksteady. And he's actually really awesome because this show takes a much more serious approach compared to, um, obviously, the 80s show. And I don't really think they were in, like, the 2003 Ninja Turtles. From what I can remember, I don't really remember Bebop and Rocksteady being in there. They always seem to be replaced by the Purple Dragons. So it's cool to have them back because I don't really remember them at all from TMNT. But it was pretty fun. It was, this is was definitely a fun episode to see them adapt to being you know mutated and it was really cool like uh bebop was still bebop he was fairly himself like he was pretty much normal he just looked different honestly but for rocksteady um you know ivan is was always like the tough russian guy but obviously as the rhinoceros he's way stronger so it was actually fun he was like completely different because he wasn't able to just you know take them on the way he did in this episode he could fight them but it wasn't the same. It wasn't like he was picking up cars and, you know, tossing them at movie theaters and stuff. So I loved it. I thought it was really cool getting to see them. Um, it really sucked that we didn't get to see them save Karai at the end of this episode. And they made it kind of sad where it's like, it's, you know, she mentioned like her mind is slipping away even more. So she's going more towards the mutated form than normal Karai. And, you know, then she actually does get captured at the end of the episode. That kind of sucked. It was like, man you know there's just a lot of crap happening for a character but the one good thing that i think comes out of her being captured is that they have baxter stockman you know we got donnie for the heroes but we have baxter stockman for the villains and hopefully he does actually find a way to save karai despite the fact that she'll be with the villains at least she'll be safe she won't be um you know completely insane and in serpent mode forever she'll actually be saved and she'll be normal karai again so that's like the only little bit of hope that I have for that is that Baxter Stockman will do something and, you know, they'll actually be able to save Karai from, you know, losing her mind, losing her normal mind. So I'm excited to see where that ends up going. And I'm sure that's what will happen most likely because Shredder wants her to be saved. So he'll have Baxter Stockman do everything he can. But it was definitely fun. The action was cool. Um... You know, I can't wait to see them get some of the newer aspects that they that we kind of get in the opening. Like, they have, like, the Turtle Blimp. They've had that in there for a while. And I'm really excited to see them really implement that in one of the episodes. And, you know, like, the Battle for New York stuff with Slash coming back and them, you know, teaming up with, like, this, uh, like, the team of mutants and stuff. I'm excited to watch that for sure. And them going up against the crank just to see how how they end up saving New York, really. So... Yeah, I'm definitely excited for the next episode. This was a good one. Um, there were a couple lines in this episode. There were two points where they made references to, like, some other stuff. I wish I could remember the first reference. I completely forgot what it was. But the second one was when Anton was going to shoot Mikey with the um, retro mutagen. And he was like, yeah, it's time for the next mutation turtle. Which I believe was a reference to Ninja Turtles, the next mutation, which is... Um, like the live action series for Ninja Turtles that came on in the 90s. Um, and for anyone who didn't see that, those are the Ninja Turtles that met the Power Rangers, if you may have seen that episode, because I never knew that show existed until like two years ago. I had never heard of it when it was on or anything like that. 
there was just that episode they were in Power Rangers. I was like, this is awesome because I love the Ninja Turtles and the Power Rangers. And I had no idea where that female Ninja Turtle came from. And it was the next Mutation series. So I think that was the joke there. And I, like I said, I wish I could remember the other one. I don't even remember who made it, honestly. But, you know, it was definitely a fun episode. It was a, I think it was a great first start uh, for them coming back because it was a cool look at Bebop and Rocksteady because we got them introduced in the last episode, but we didn't see them as Bebop and Rocksteady. It was just, you know, they're in the series now, and then this was the first one where they were in the series doing, you know, what Bebop and Rocksteady do. And they did a much better job compared to, like, the 80s version who stumble over each other and constantly fail. So it was actually fun to watch that, too, just to see how comedic they would be versus um, how good they would do it, you know, in this version of the series. Because even... You know, as serious as it gets, Bebop and Rocksteady, I believe, are like the comedic relief. Like, I've never read the comics, so I could be totally wrong about this. But I do believe that's kind of their role. They are meant to be, like, aside from Mikey, as far as, you know, the villain side of things, they're meant to be sort of the comedic relief in some aspects. And we definitely have that, of course, in Bebop. And so it, it definitely works. They have that nice uh, middle ground, which this show is, I think, done great with as far as having the great comedy, but real serious drama when they want to kick it up like stuff whenever it's like splinter versus shredder is like the craziest thing ever but i love this episode i'm really excited for the battle of new york of course i want to know what you guys thought about this episode so please comment below let me know your favorite parts your least favorite parts and of course what do you guys think of you know the first full episode where we got to see bebop and rock city i thought it was awesome so please comment below let me know and thanks for watching